Hello. Um, it's Annie here doing a session on stacking cakes um, and talk about dowels, that kind of thing. Um, I'm hopefully looking at the camera because the, the camera is there. <laughs> but if I suddenly do this, it's because I'm looking at myself. Um, so just ignore where I'm looking. And in fact, at some point in a minute, I'm going to point the camera down anyway, so you won't get to look at this. Um, so what I've done is I've um, made a cake for Sunday for my mother, my dear mother and family, because we're all getting together on Sunday. Um, and various members of my family need gluten free. So I've done a gluten free top layer and a non gluten free. So full of gluten <laughs> at the bottom, not layer, tier. I always get tiers and layers mixed up. Maybe. So the top tier is gluten free. Bottom tier is jam packed with gluten. Um, and I will show you those and show you how I've done those in a minute. But the first thing I'm going to talk about is dowels. And I have, let me point this downwards because I'll show you my dowel tray. Hopefully you can see that. Can I see that? There we are. This is my dowel tray. Um, one piece of equipment I have found really useful is a pair of secateurs. It's actually from Wix, so about a fiver. I keep them just for this, obviously. I don't do gardening with them and then come in. Um, but they are much easier to cut your dowels with than scissors or a, I mean the for ages I tried to do it with a knife and it's a nightmare these would do it in one go so get some of these the other piece of equipment that's really useful particularly if you're going to do a central dowel you don't need them if you're not going to do a central dowel but ready cut um, cake cards you can get these from a couple of places um, and off the top of my head, I've completely forgotten where they are, but I will put a link in. <laughs> Probably getting old, the memory goes. Um, but obviously having them uh, sturdy, uh, sturdy st cake stackers, is that what they're called? I can't remember, but I'll, I'll put a link for them. And that obviously saves you having to um, drill them or whatever. And they're not as expensive, expensive as you think they might be. Um, just make sure that the dowels that you buy will fit through because some of the thicker dowels won't fit through that um so just be aware of that and these come in all sizes you can get them and you can get square ones as well okay so those are really useful to know about and then when it comes to dowels itself actually i was just going to have a look to see if i had any of my really big ones yes i have um I have to put those in my cupboard because they don't fit in my tray. So you've got the bamboo ones here. Uh, I think these are PME. Yes, PME. Uh, most of the cake suppliers will do you bamboo ones. Great if you're if you're sort of doing eco-friendly, if that's you know your your thing. If your ideal client is eco-friendly, then these are obviously better. The wooden ones. Um, otherwise, most of the ones that you get are going to be this, is it probably, probably propylene? I can't say it, but you know what I mean. Um, plastic, in other words. Um, easy dowels, you can get pink ones, you can get blue ones, which sometimes better because it means you can spot them. But obviously, if you're putting dowels, any kind of dowel that you're putting in to a cake, you must, must, must let... Um, them know whoever's getting it and whoever's cutting it where the dowels are how many there are where they are um so there was a fashion wasn't there i don't know if it still is a fashion but the whole shoving the groom or the bride's cake in the uh, face in the cake thing which is abhorrent to us cake makers of course um but they need to know um that there's dowels in it so that they don't do that <laughs> Because obviously that's not going to be very pleasant. Um, so these ones, I don't know if you can see, those are fairly um, narrow. Can you see that? Uh, but they are quite strong. Oh, she says bending it. <laughs> that's a good advert for it, isn't it? These are actually quite strong once they're in the cake. These ones, these are easy cut dowels. Can you see that there? Let me get the angle right. But these, as you can see... Are thicker now these are 
going to be for your bottom tier. If, so if you're doing lots of tiers, um, you know, big tiers, and you've got a lot of weight to carry, it's the this type that you want. Can you see that it's sort of reinforced in there? You might be able to see that. Um, and these will carry an awful lot of weight. So these, um, and these ones are also extra long. These are, I think these are, hold on. 16 inch so if you want to put a central dowel into a longer cake these are what you need but just beware because it's these that don't fit through that one okay um so that's the dowels mostly i use these i don't use an awful lot of these only very occasionally so i had a, a seven tier i've done a couple of sixes and fives um, and I might use the thicker ones for that. Um, but actually, the, the these are, are used, I use them in the cake, not as a central dowel anyway. Because once you put these in the bottom tier or tiers, it's fairly stable. And the central one is just to, to stabilise it. So you don't need necessarily need a thick one for the central dowel. One, one this width would be fine for a central one anyway. So, let's put that away. Um, so, I've got my two cakes here. Don't judge the board. I ran out of cake boards. And the only one I had, an 8 inch that I had, had had a dummy on it and it had stuff on it. So I had to get a cake card. <laughs> Just don't ask. <laughs> it's for family. Doesn't matter. It's for family. Hang on, let's just pop that up a bit. There we go. Um, so, and I haven't done, I haven't covered the board because life's too short uh, and it's for family. If it was for uh, a booking, I, I would, but I'm not going to. And anyway, we're not talking about that anyway today. Oh, we're talking about dowels. Um, oh, hang on, that's gone. Now these are ganached. Um, hang on. Uh, I just need two. Um, and the key really when you're stacking the key when you're stacking ganache cakes or buttercream cakes is chilled they've got to be chilled they've got to be Ooh. sorry didn't realize that i'd knocked something into this and it's... but if you chill it you can then get a nice smooth finish and you can get a nice smooth edge and i also did them upside down method as well which is why i've got the nice sharp tops. Looky looky. So we're going to dowel this one. Now as a rule of thumb, I take the size of the cake. So this is a six inch. And the number of dowels, generally I divide it by two. God, hairs everywhere. How very, how do you think? Um, so six inch cake, I would put three dowels in. Eight inch cake, I'll put four in, and so on. Um, now it's moderately important to get it nice and central. So what I do, and I haven't got any six inch circles left, which is typical because I've just ran out making these. Um, but the, if you don't use these, they, they just save so much time, these circle parchment things. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use this to mark out where the dowels go. And we do that by just folding this thing. So primary school fractions are coming in now. <laughs> now, if you were gonna do, um, you know, if it was a, a seven or an eight inch cake, you might wanna put four. So you chop it into quarters and then lay it so that it's right in the middle. And then I would use a dowel to, to do it. There's the middle. And then 
one, two, three, four. Okay, just remember how big your upper tier is. This is stating the obvious, by the way, so apologies if I'm teaching grandma how to. Um, but be careful not to put your, your dowels too far out so that they show. Um, it doesn't actually, if they're, if they're quite close to the middle, it doesn't matter that much, particularly with a cake this size. Obviously, if your cake is sort of um, 8, 10 or 12, you want them fairly round the edge because you want them to be sort of you want the, the cake card on top to be sitting on them that didn't show you anything at all but hopefully you get what i mean and um, if they're too if they're too centralized the cake card is still going to wobble so you you need stability so three is the minimum there's no point in doing two because your cake card's still going to wobble three your triangle shape is going to be nice and steady so if you're going to do four fold it into four one two three four and as you can see where i've made the mark i can see now where that center is um if it's oh my God, I'm lucky now Ugh. i have washed my hands by the way i don't tend to do a lot in gloves i tend to wash my hands much more instead i prefer that and it's a family cake anyway so i'm not not too worried about that we all share the same germs don't we? um is that going to give me no that's not going to give me six <laughs> primary school primary school hang on let's move that out of the way so we're going to do six we need to do it in sort of thirds don't we so i need to do it sort of there and i need to do it about there oh that's quite good actually so there we go okay and the other thing you can do i've got a pair of scissors here which i have you can just do a little snip in fact if you fold it over again and just do a little snip oops Ooh, you get confetti don't get that in the cake but when you open it, you can see you've got little holes where you can place the dowel. So, those might be a little bit far out actually, because my top tier is a little bit smaller than that. But I'm going to use the wooden ones. Um, because I don't need much dowling on this one. So I always start at sort of 12 o'clock at the top of the cake and then do everything from there. Don't have to, it's just, it's just the way I do it. Um, so I'm going to have one there and then because I'm going to do three, I'm going to have one there and one there and the, the folds and the cuts in your um parchment will help you out with that hopefully i can see them yes there's one there's the other one and i've got the other one there Hang on. i mean you can do it by eye to be honest with you it's it's not gonna end the world if you're half a millimeter millimeter out but can you see how i've done that Very, ooh. can you see how I've done that? Yeah, you get the idea there, don't you? You get the idea. All right, then what we do is, it's a good idea just to clean and wipe off your dowel first of all, um, to make sure they're doubly clean. Then you need to stick them in. If you want to be really, really precise, you can use a spirit level you see that you can use a spirit level um, to make sure that it's straight when it goes in it's a much better idea to do that if you've got a bottom tier and you're going to have at least you know three tiers up, up top 
um, because your bottom tier needs to be solid and spot on. If you're only putting one tier on or even two and they're slightly smaller and they're not so heavy, um, having the bottom dowel, dowels 90 degree angle isn't going to matter too much. You're not going to come a cropper too much. But if it's a bigger cake um, and a lot is resting on your bottom tier, then using a spirit level to make sure it's upright and 90 degrees is a good idea. But I am going to do this just by eye. So what we're going to do first of all is we're going to just push it in. Now obviously you can see that I've got lots left over there. Um, I know some people get an edible pen and mark. I tend not to. I just tend to put my thumb where it's going to come. I pull it out. I then get my handy Wix snippers. <laughs> See how easy it is. Brilliant. Now that is going to be exact. Oh no, not that one. That one. That one. It's going to be exact the height that I need. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the other two using that as a guide. Okay. Because that way, let's just push that out away for a minute. Because that way, if your cake is slightly wobbly, although hopefully you've used a level to make sure it's level but if it is slightly out the dowels will keep the upper tier straight okay because if you if you have a slightly wonky lower tier and you're putting lots of tiers on top you can imagine what's going to happen so having the dowels the same length even if they stick up slightly on your tier you can mend that with the buttercream or the ganache or whatever it is. Um, but if they are not exactly the same. Now I know people that measure it and do edible doodles and all sorts of things. I tend to just hold one against the other. Make sure that I'm right on there. And then cut. And then, once I have these... It really is just a question of popping them in. Okay. There we are. Now the other thing you can do, then this isn't sort of compulsory, but it is a tiny little bit of whatever it is you've got there, ganache or buttercream or and some people use royal icing as well. To see that one's sticking up a bit, so it must not be level that. But I don't mind. Um, oh, and then we're going to put a, a bit of a central tier in. So I'm just going to use one of these because I'm transporting it on Sunday. Um, I'm just going to put this in, and I am going to just spirit level this because if it's wonky, then my top tier is going to be wonky. So. You have to sort of do it around as well, so it's not leaning. Okay. <laughs> it's quite tricky because you have to go around. I think that's going to be fairly straight. There we go. Now, let's just get that out of the way. Um, now, that is going to be way, way too big. You don't really want the dowel actually to come to the top of that one. Not really. Um, if, you've, if your top tier is sort of filled and covered and all that, and it's fairly solid, you don't need this to come to the top. Two thirds of that even half the way out is going to be enough to keep that nice and um, nice and secure. So I just do it in situ. So I probably, ooh, how big's that? So I do everything by eye, I don't measure anything. Uh, let's do it about there. Okay, then tiny little bit of that around. 
just to because when I put the top tier on um, I obviously want it to stick a little bit now I've got some extra ganache and stuff here and stuff just ganache um, obviously whatever it is you're using for your cake use that um, and then it's a question of putting the top on. Now I'm going to wash my hands just once more. Bear with me. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to use, I'm actually going to pick the cake up. Um, obviously, if this is a, a booking, you're going to want to use gloves. And it, this has been out of the fridge for a little bit of time, so it might smudge a little bit. I think we'll be all right. Um, you can use, I've got one of these cake lifter to get it off wherever it is you've got it on. So you can use that. I tend not to, I'm going to put that back. Not for little ones anyway. So what I'm going to do, now this one I already have underneath the, I can't show it to you, they'll have to take my word for it. <laughs> oh, can you see that one? Right? Hang on, let's, you can't see that. Let's bring this up. Oh, the wonders of modern technology. There we go, that's better, isn't it? You can see my lovely messy kitchen. Just ignore my messy kitchen, please. Oh, gold. Hang on. <laughs> Is that gonna. Oh, hang on. There we go. That's better. There we go. Hopefully, that will do it. Right. I oh, know I've just washed my hands, but I haven't much. Right. So we get our bottoms here. We get our fingers as much onto the card underneath it as we can. Now, the other trick that you might want to use. Is to put your spirit level on top just find the hole with your fingers underneath and then just let gravity whoops take over there we are. okie dokie so there we have the stacked cake now that is going to be fairly secure. That is, yeah, that's not going to really going to go anywhere. If you have the gap at the bottom, hang on, I need to wash my hands. Then what you can do is get your ganache or your buttercream. That's if you're not ribboning it. If you're putting a ribbon round, you don't need to worry about filling in the gaps. Um, but if you're not ribboning it, then tiny bit, I don't know if you can see how to do this. So you can just tiny bit of ganache. You can even pipe it actually, get in a piping bag and pipe it. I'm not going to go too much because I say this isn't for, not that my family don't deserve the best, but they don't notice it when they get the best. So I'm not going to bother too much. Uh, do you know what I mean? Um, there we go. So I'm sort of doing it the other way that I normally do so you can see it there. Just fill it in. Or you might find that just piping that's what I would do then. Just to scrape the excess off. Okay. Scrape the excess off there. So you can see you've joined the gap there, if that makes any sense at all. 
so there we go so that's your stacked cakes what i'm going to do now is i've made some tulips that i'm going to attach to it i might do a little video on that and show you that as well um, but that basically is your stacking i hope that's helped if you've got any questions on anything that i've done or um where to get anything i'll try and remember to put some links in as well um but there we go i hope that's helped thank you